Lesson 4.5, what we all love to do, and that is word problems. Okay, the key to these is that you have to write the, the inequality and then you have to solve. So you can't just get away with the guessing and the checking and trying to figure out what the answer is without coming up with the inequality first. So let's look at this first one. It says four times a number less six is less than twice that number plus 12. That sounds fun. Okay, so let's see if we could write it as we read it. Four times a number less six. Okay, now we have the word is, which typically means equal, but in this case, because we're doing inequalities, it's less than. So I'm gonna write the less than symbol. Twice that same number, so two times n plus 12. And they wanna know what is that number, okay? So let's write this out, four n minus six, is less than 2n plus 12. And then we solve. All right, so let's see what we get here. I'm going to subtract 2n. And we end up with 2n minus six is less than 12. Then I add six to both sides and I end up with two N is less than 18 divide by two and N is less than nine. So this represents that that number can be anything below nine. It could be eight, it could be seven, it could be negative three, it could be whatever, below nine, okay? So this would be our answer right here, okay? I want you to try example two on your own. Okay, check example two. Did you do six minus? Yeah. Three yeah. inch. Six okay, times. because it's six less than three times a number, that three times a number will go first. Or you could have negative six plus three in. Oh. Oh, it doesn't have yeah, the six minus three in. So. Okay. All right. Let's look at number three. The sum of a number and four more than three times the number is greater than 28. So it's the sum of a number, I'll just put that in. So the sum of this number and what's next is four more than three times the number and it is greater than 28. I like these problems where we can just write it out as we read it and makes it simpler. So we have n plus four plus three n is greater than 28. And it doesn't matter where you place the numbers, it's commutative property of addition. So it could be n plus three n plus four or three n plus n plus four. Okay, we're gonna combine our like terms. We have four n plus four is greater than 28. 4n is greater than 24. And we have n is greater than six. Questions about that one? Went kind of fast. All right, so this is the one that you guys were asking about earlier. Uh, Mrs. Weatherman wants to earn more than $5,000 interest when she invests for one year at 10%. How much should she invest to earn more than the $5,000? Okay, so 
we have to use the formula I equals PRT. Okay. And you have to understand the difference between principal, interest rate, and time. I think the rate and the time are the easy ones. Okay. We should know that time is in years up here. This is our T. We should know the percent is our rate as a decimal. And then it says she wants to earn more than 5,000 interest. It tells us right there that 5,000 is interest. So the investment, what you deposit into the bank is your principal. So this is P. So let's write that out. I is 5,000. P is P. We're going to use P. Um, R is 10%, but we turn that to a decimal, so it's 0 0.1. And then time is 1 for one year. Okay. So let's plug this into our equation. If we have I, O, oh, and we can't forget that she wants, I want huh, to earn more than, earn more than the 5,000. So I want my interest to be greater than, no, 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 I did that wrong. My interest, what I earn over here needs to be greater than. So I equals P times my rate, times my time. Okay. Oh, I need to put the 5,000 right here. Okay. And now I just solved it. Does that make sense how I set this up? Yeah, okay. So let's do 0 0.1. Oh, 0 0.1 times 1 is 0 0.1. 5,000 is less than or equal to 0 0.1 P. Okay. So we just multiply that. And actually, it should be with the 0 right there. So then we're going to divide by 0.10 on both sides. And remember that when you divide with decimals, you have to move your decimal over twice here. So you move it over twice here or just add zeros. So 10 goes into 55 times and then all these zeros. So, She has to, she has to invest more than $50,000. So that P needs to be greater than the $50,000 in order for her to earn more than $5,000 in interest in one year. I don't know about you, but I don't have $50,000 to invest. So, all right. You're going to have one just like this on your homework. So that's why it's here. All right, let's flip it over. We have two more. All right, 20 of the ninth grade students. Now, anytime you see a number written in words, you might want to just put the number above it, okay? 20 of the ninth grade students want to go on a field trip to the underground taverns. The gas for the RRCA buses will cost $234. So 234. The driver will cost 45. We have to pay a driver to drive us. The tickets are $347.50, and the snacks will be $75.60. Okay, so we have all these fees if we want to go on any field trip here at the school. That's just how it is. The class has at most $800, which means they don't have more than $800. They cannot spend more than $800, okay? After all expenses are paid, how much money does each student get back so they can purchase a souvenir? Round down to the nearest dollar. So whatever we don't spend gets distributed between the 20 students to um, 
to get a souvenir. So does anyone have any idea what we have to do with all of these numbers? Okay. But how would we set it up as an inequality? I just saw that. Oh, but what did I say at the beginning of the lesson? You have to write an inequality. So yeah. let's let's look at this. We have two, so we have eight hundred dollars. Okay, what we spend over here cannot be more than eight hundred dollars. So it's going to be less than or equal to that eight hundred dollars. We can spend eight hundred. Okay. Um. So we have two hundred and thirty-four dollars for the gas. We have forty-five for the driver. We have three hundred forty-seven dollars and fifty cents for the tickets, and we have seventy-five point six, so seventy-five dollars and sixty cents for the snacks. But what about the twenty students and their souvenirs? How would we put that into the inequality? Well, then that means that we're figuring out how much each student has to pay for the trip. Oh. We would write it as, we're gonna add in, because this is part of the budget, that each student gets some extra money for or whatever's left over, so 20X. So this is how we would set it up. So now we're gonna add all of this together. Has anybody already done that? What'd you get, Keegan? I didn't even add it up. I just subtracted all of them. By I subtracted 800 by all. Okay, let me add this up really quick. I got a 98. When you were done. You got it, 98. And then 75, 60. Okay, let's add this really quick. One, one, 10, 70, 18, two, two, 10, 18, 19, 20, two, zero, seven, oh, two, 10. So 800. And then $702.10 plus how much ever each student can get once expenses are paid. All right, now we're gonna subtract $702.10 on each side. So zero Come over here. Hopefully everybody knows how to subtract with zeros. Okay, so we have $97.90 to split between two students, almost $100. So we know that it's going to be around a little bit less than $5, $5 for each student. So we're going to divide both sides by 20. And remember in the problem, it says round to the nearest dollar, round down to the nearest dollar. So I'm going to take $97.90 and divide it by 20, okay. So we have four, I have to think about that. And we know just by that, if we round down to the nearest dollar because maybe we need to save a little bit extra or whatever, that it's gonna be about $4, right? So they can't get, they have to get less than or equal to four dollars, basically, because up here it says around to the nearest full okay. dollar. Okay, there's a problem like that on the homework too. Oh, no, you're not. You can do it. It's just adding, adding and dividing, and subtracting. Okay. Here we go. Number six, Justine washes family pets for $12 per pet. How many pets would she need to wash in order to make $150? I'm going to give you a minute to think about this equation or this inequality, and I want you to write it out, and then we're going to. All right, so that's what it should look like. 
and then go ahead and solve and see how many pets does she have to wash in order to make at least $150. And I should have put that here in the notes in order to make at least $150. Okay, so we're gonna divide by 12. Twelve pets and a half. Okay, can we wash a half a pet? Yes. No. no, that is not reasonable. I mean, you could technically, but it's not logical, right? You're you're not going to get paid to wash half a dog. So, how many dogs do we need to wash in order to make our one full one fifty? Thirteen. Yeah, because this is going to be. 12.5, so 12.5, so I would say at least 13 pets. I would not take 12.5. That's not reasonable in a real world situation. So this is it right here. Okay, last problem. Each desk placed in our classroom requires 36 inches of clearance. So 36 inches per desk. If each row of desks cannot be greater than 34 feet in length, how many desks may be placed in each row? Okay, so we're dealing with conversions here because our um, desks are 36 inches, but the length of the row is 34 feet. So what should we do before we even begin to solve this problem? Huh? Yeah. Well, actually, oh, I guess you could change the feet. I changed mine to inches. My 34 feet into inches because 34 isn't. So you want to change our inches to feet? Okay. So 36 inches equals three feet. Okay, and so if each desk has three feet of clearance and we want to know how many desks can be in each row, how would we set this up? How would we set? Sorry. Uh, okay. 3x is less than or equal to 34. Yeah. Okay. And so then we would solve this and we would get, we would divide both sides by three. This is another one like the pets. You can't have half a desk, right? So, but this one is a tad different. So x is less than or equal to one, 11 and one third, you said? Okay. Can we have a third of a desk? Do we have room to fit another whole desk? No. So it's at most 11 desks per row. So at most 11 desks per row. Okay. okay. So that concludes lesson 4.5.